and we're going to talk about tips and tricks in design life to uh, try and help you uh, push around design life a little bit faster. Maybe uh, see things that uh, you haven't seen before. Um, so let's let's, uh, let's get on with it. <coughs> First thing I want to mention uh, is something called static entity subsets. And uh, a static e entity subset allows you to specify a node or a set of nodes or elements that can either be used or excluded in an analysis. So if you've got a model with you know, a, a million elements or something, and you're only interested in a small area, there's no need to analyze the entire model. If you only want to focus in on one small area, you can very specifically either create a little user group for that and use that in there, or you can just enter that specific node. This is used a lot of times if um, you want to output the stress history of a particular node in your model, maybe the worst or the most damaged element in your model. Uh, <coughs> if you ever go and, and set uh, output time history without doing this, you're going to get quite a few errors. So, uh, so you're going to want to do this if, uh, or you want to make sure you do this if you do output the stress history. The second thing is uh, something called the Elimination Post-Processor Wizard. Um, I, I don't know how long the wizard's been here. It's been here a few years now. Um, but what it allows you to do is very simply and easily add elimination methods. Uh, for example, we can add a, a damage calculation okay, as, uh, as an elimination method. So to do this, you simply right-click on the run in your advanced edit click on auto elimination setup. Sorry, okay, you don't click on the run. You right click on the analysis section of the file. You say uh, auto elimination setup. You choose what type of stress mode uh, or damage mode you want to you want to do. A damage calculation is going to actually do a full damage calculation. A stress assessment is just going to look at max uh, or that stress range at that particular location. Uh, so, you know, if you if you do a fatigue analysis, a lot of times a large area of the model is completely blue. I mean, it's, 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 there's not a lot of, uh, of fatigue issues going on there. So a stress assessment can quickly throw away that stuff you're not going to want to do a very uh, detailed calculation on. Uh, right, so you select which one of those modes you want to use, and then you can choose here um, you know, a percentage that you would like to keep, okay, for the percentage of highest damage to be charged to keep damage. Uh, and then it'll ask you if you want to even add a, uh, uh, a secondary mode here, so you can do duplicate or compare. Okay, so after you're all done, it will build this, uh, all of these items in the uh, advanced edit for you. Uh, so it's a very quick and easy way to add this, this elimination system, or to add uh, these, these runs that ends up allowing you to only do a very detailed calculation on the nodes that actually are needed. <coughs> um, synchronizing displays. This is, uh, this is a tool that allows you to, if you, if you have multiple FE displays, like you have an input FE display and a result uh, display, you can simply click on the little synchronize button on any or some subset of all your displays. And they automatically, as you move one, all of the others are moved into that display. Okay, um, so it's a good way to, uh, you know, if you if you have multiple displays and you're looking at a couple different result sets and you want to create nice pictures so they're all in the same orientation, this allows you to uh, to do that very easily. <coughs> um, if you've ever played around with our materials manager. Uh, you might notice that these days we have quite an extensive list of materials in there. And so there, there are a number of ways you can navigate through that. Um, first, you can create folders in the materials database and uh, selectively pick and choose what material you want in what folder. Okay, so in this example here, you've got uh, a folder for aluminum and a folder for steel. Okay, and maybe those are commonly used Secondly, you 
can also filter that list. So uh, under the View button, you can click on Filter, and then it'll bring up this Material Filter dialog box here. And you can enter uh, a series of values or names uh, to be filtered by. So uh, for example, right here, we're looking at fields, and we're setting this as minimum UTS of 1,400 uh, MPA. Okay, so if I type that in there, and I say Apply, the list of all your materials will be limited strictly to um, those materials that have the UTS of at least 1,400 psi. Uh, and, and not just materials with UTS of 1,400 psi. Um, this is new in 11. I think from here on out, everything that I'm going to show you is new in version 11. So we've done quite a few uh, enhancements or usability features on, uh, on some of our display today. Uh, one of them uh, is that you can now store display views um, with your flow. Uh, so if you open up a model, save a, uh, create a user group, say it's, it's, it's highlighting this particular ring here. In the FD input properties, there's, a, there's now a, uh, an option called store display group. If you set that to true, this user group will be saved with that flow. Um, so now you don't have to go in and, and create a listing of all your of all your views and, and build them out in, in the open model. These will stay with your uh, with your flow. For some of these other ones, I'm going to jump into the software real quick and show you. So also within our FD display, if we're looking at a model like this, we now have these buttons uh, up in our toolbar here. Okay, there's these four arrows. Two of them are blue and two of them are green. If you hover your mouse over it, you'll see now these buttons allow you to view your result cases without having to go into the properties menu and then choose which result case you want to look at. So if you click on the green one, it's going to select the first result case. Okay, in this, in this instance, we have displacements here, so it's looking at my displacement. The blue arrow will allow you to scroll through the result case, the result cases. Okay, so I can click next, and it'll show me displacement at time two, displacement at time three, displacement at time four. Okay, and clicking on the green button will bring me to stresses. Okay, so now I can scroll through all my stresses. Here I am at time four. Okay, back to time one, time two, time three, et cetera. Okay, so it's a, it's a much more efficient way to scroll through all your result sets if you want to see the stresses in the FD display uh, before you know, a, a van went by. And you used to have to just go into the properties, click on FD display, and then choose your result set and then just scroll through. Okay, so that's new. Um, let's see. As far as uh, scrolling around goes, if you zoom in on some some area now, we've always had this button up here, okay, that would get you back to the full plot view of the model. It would zoom all the way out. Um, but anybody who, who is familiar with CAD or kicks around in CAD models, there's always a shortcut to get back to the, the pit view of the model. So we've incorporated that now too. If you hold the control button and middle click, it will bring you back to the pit view of your, uh, of your model. Okay. So I found that to be quite useful when, uh, when interrogating results in the model. Um, additionally, we now have the ability in our FD display to uh, display more than one label at once. So if I, real quick, I'm going to create a quick list and I'm going to select the one at tabulated results, um, okay, it brings up a list. Uh, it looks like this is a list from earlier, but if 
you you now have a list of all these uh, IDs here, and you can click on them, right? And you can have multiple labels on your model at one time. Uh, previously, this wasn't possible. Now you can look at all of the uh, as many labels as your hook wants. Share them all by just clicking on them. Right? Okay, so those are some nice new usability features in uh, in SE Explorer. So again, next result case, next result case will give us uh, uh, the blue arrows will switch between result cases. Uh, so here again, as I switch, or as I push the blue button, it will switch to the cases. And each case set can be switched to its own uh, just as a general reminder um, if you ever forget or would like to be reminded about what all the buttons do <coughs> it seems like any piece of software that you use that that manipulates 3d models has a different convention for pressing and dragging and zooms and rotates and everything so if you want a quick refresh of uh, what those button clicks and, and keyboard uh, uh, buttons are. Uh, you can click on the little mouse button, and there's a little picture of the mouse that shows up on the uh, on the toolbar when you're in your SE display, and you can quickly get a uh, a rundown of what those are. Okay. Uh, within the dialog box, we now have uh, a couple of uh, a couple new abilities. First. We've included the Maximize button. Okay, so if you're ever tired of opening your Primark Configuration Editor and it being smashed into a little box and having to scroll uh, or just drag the box to the side and then hit it down so you can see everything, we now have a Maximize button. So you can simply click on the Maximize button and it fills your whole screen. Okay, so you can very easily see all of the options in there. <coughs> we also have the ability to uh, access the Advanced Edit directly by double clicking. So if you open your advanced configuration editor, you can simply check that little box right there. And now every time that you double click on your analysis there, it'll automatically bring up the advanced edit. So no more having to uh, accidentally double click on the diff and it being a regular property and try to duck out of it, right click on it, go to advanced edit, and then to the advanced edit. Now you can check that box anytime. I don't think that these are new in 11, but just a reminder, these are undo and redo buttons for your advanced configuration editor. So if you accidentally delete one of your buttons, uh, it comes down forever, um, and this is just like a fatal mistake. But if you realize that you've made a, a fatal mistake really quickly, you can click on this little button down here, and that will just undo what you accidentally just clicked on. Cancel button? Yeah, the cancel button. If you make a whole bunch of changes in here and then hit cancel, it's not going to take any of those changes. Okay, so, so you can't make a bunch of changes, hit cancel, open it back up, and then hit undo. That's, that's not going to work. This, this only works if you screw something up while you're in the editor. Yeah, cancel will just throw it away and pretend like nothing ever happened. So if you make changes in there and hit cancel, um, hopefully those weren't changes you made. Multiple labels, so we already talked about that. This is uh, this is probably more useful. I showed it on the SE, the, the input display, but it's usually uh, more helpful on the output display if you had, say, uh, um, a list of hot spots and you wanted to see where those nodes are. You can now pull up your uh, your feature list and then click on the on the node of interest, and it'll show you exactly where they are. And you can make that multiple times. And I think somebody showed this earlier, but we now have under the uh, under the load mapping editor, uh, we now have the advanced button um, as a as a tab in there as well. So when you edit your load mapping, you can see the advanced features that uh, that are associated with that that uh, those diff right there. So if you want to just kind of edit it up. So, nice and quick. Uh, 
hopefully you learned something new.